I used to do this demo in class with the bucket. And, you know, if you put water in and spun it fast enough, it, you wouldn't get wet until um, they stopped making ice cream pails with structural integrity. Um, they started, instead of having a metal handle, they made this plastic handle. And, well, plastic handles come off when the bucket is full of water and you're winging it around like this. And so one day when I was doing this, the handle broke. Where does it break? Where's the most force on it, top or bottom? Right, so it breaks right here, just as you're coming up, okay? And so the bucket flies off and goes straight there. Luckily, just like today, there was no one sitting in that desk because a big bucket of water hit the wall right there and it went everywhere. Um, so no one got hurt and I never did the demo again because, well, I don't want to get sued. Uh, if you ever like, there's like tons of YouTube videos out there of like teachers who made really poor decisions on their demos. Yeah, I'm not one of those guys. Like the guy with the sledgehammer and the cinder block. Right, yeah, some of you know which one I'm talking about. Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, um, I'm not going to do that. Okay. We're just going to kind of imagine this one. Okay. But you can do this. Okay. You can you can get a bucket full of water and whirl it around. And you won't get wet. Okay. The only kind of difficult times are when you're first getting it going. Because obviously Newton's first law, it sloshes quite a bit, okay? And when you're trying to stop it, okay? When you're trying to stop it, you kind of got to you know, go kind of slow and bring it back down. And a little bit of water will come out at that point. But once it's spinning, okay, the centripetal force and the inertia, okay, work together and it stays inside the bucket. All right, so we got this bucket of water and it has a mass of one and a half kilograms. We're spinning it in a vertical circle, okay? And the radius of the circle is 0.75 meters. The speed of the bucket's three meters per second. What's the tension of the rope in position C? So this is, of course, where the most pressure is on that rope because that's where gravity is pulling out, inertia is working against you. It's where you have to pull, pull the hardest. It's where the bucket broke when I did this, okay, where the handle broke. All right, so we're going to figure out what the tension, that would be this force right here, is going to be in the rope in that situation. All right, so we got FC equals forces in minus forces out, okay? What are our forces in? Okay, uh, well, it can't be centripetal force because centripetal force is the sum, right? So which force, tension or gravity, is pulling in? Tension, right? Gravity's pulling out of the circle right now, okay? Gravity's pulling down. The bucket's right here, okay? So we got the tension force pulling in. We got gravity pulling out, okay, and we got FC here. All right, so what we're looking for is the tensional force. So what do I have to do with gravity if I want to get tensional force by itself? Add it over to the other side. Okay, and that makes sense because this force has to be bigger than these two, right? It's the one that's pulling in. If it's going to make the net force, FC, in, it's got to be bigger, okay? So FC plus FG equals the, uh, the tensional force in the rope. All right, so we got MV squared over R plus m times g is going to give us our tensional force. All right, so when we plug in our numbers here, we had a 1.5 kilogram bucket. Okay, so 1.5 times 3 meters per second, okay, and it's squared, and the radius was 0.75 meters, okay, plus uh, 1.5 times 9.81, okay, and that gives us our tensional force. Okay, so we got here... 1.5 times 9 divided by 0.75, okay, so we got 18 there, and then we're adding on the force of gravity, so that'll be 1.5 times 9.81. All right, so we would need 32 point, actually we only have two significant figures there, 33 newtons, or sorry, yeah, 33 newtons worth of tensional force, okay. All right, is that much different than the first question we did on the quiz? Or sorry, second question we did on the quiz? Except this is the bottom of the circle, that was top of the circle, okay? But they're always gonna be forces in minus forces out. All you have to identify is which way are the forces going so that you can do that operation. Awesome. Depends whether it's on the outside or the inside. Okay, so if it's on the inside, there aren't any forces out, okay? So if I've got the object here, okay, Gravity's trying to pull it in. Its inertia is causing it to push on the track, so the track pushes 
back, normal force and gravity both push in. So there are no forces out on the top, on the inside of a vertical circle. Okay. Um, I want you guys to try just number three. Okay, don't worry about one and two for now. Okay, just try number three. All right, so in number three, the situation we're dealing with is this. Here's the rock, here's the string okay, that's attached to it. This is equivalent to being on the inside of a, like a roller coaster's loop, okay? Not on the outside, on the inside. So we have gravity pulling in, and we have the tension in the rope also pulling in. We have no forces out in this situation. Right? So they've told us the tension is 79 newtons. We're looking for the speed of the rock. So we know that FC equals, equals forces in minus forces out. There aren't any. Okay, sorry, this should be tension, not normal force. Okay, plus tension. There aren't any forces out, so that's it. That's all we have is these two things added together this time. All right, so we have MV squared over R equals M times G plus 79 newtons. So if I'm looking for V, I'm going to multiply both sides by R, divide both sides by M, and then square root. That'll tell me the speed of the rock. You know? Pardon me? Because gravity is pulling the rock downwards. Right? When it's at the top, I have to include gravity. Gravity is one of the forces, right? No, they're separate forces. Okay? Like... If I spin this thing just fast enough to stay in the circle, okay, so if I'm doing a vertical circle, okay, and it's going just fast enough, there's no tension in the string, right? But if I swing it faster than that, not only is gravity acting, but there's also the tension in the string pulling it back, right? They work together in that situation if I'm going faster than I have to, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so now if I plug in my numbers here, okay, I'm going to have that V is going to equal, um, what was the mass of the rock? 0.98. So 0.98 uh, times 9.81 plus 79 times the radius, which was 0.4, okay, divided by 0.98. Okay, so we got 0.98 times 9.81 plus 79 times 0.4 times 0.98. All right, so we're looking at uh, a speed of 6 meters per second. All right, in terms of like the mathematics, that's probably the trickiest. Okay, in terms of like the formula, the manipulation in algebra, that's probably as tricky as they get. All right, so any questions on that one? Okay. Are these all, like, do these all essentially break down to the same thing? Right, they're just like a Newton's second law problem. In fact, they are a Newton's second law problem. What are the two forces? Okay, are they in or out? Set them equal to FC. Okay. Uh, no, we don't need to do that one. We've already done ones like that too. Okay, um, try this one. I've given one like this on a unit exam many, many times. Okay, so give this one a try. It's a vertical circle question. Okay, so they feel two times heavier than normal at the bottom of the loop. How heavy do you feel if you're normal? Like what would you calculate your weight to be if you were feeling normal? Mass times gravity. Okay, so really then, what we're saying is that they're, the force of gravity is still m times g. We can't change gravity, but they feel two times heavier than normal. What force do you feel? Yeah, normal force. Your apparent weight. Their apparent weight is 2 mg. Okay, because they're feeling two times heavier than normal. All right, so at the bottom of a loop... Gravity is acting out, and normal force is acting in. So what we have is Fc equals forces in, normal force, minus forces out, gravity. 
Okay, so what we have is mv squared over r equals 2mg minus mg. Well, what's 2mg minus mg? mg. It's like two apples minus one apple is one apple. Okay, everybody follow me there, right? Like 2x minus x is just x. Okay, so what we have left is mv squared over r equals mg. Okay, and then we can manipulate, which is what you see here. Okay, uh, manipulating for uh, the speed, that's what we were looking for, right? So we got the square root of gr, which is what it seems like we always end up with. Okay, um, and then we got, so that'll be 9.81 times the radius, which was 35, square rooted. Okay. So they're moving at 18 meters, almost 19 meters per second. I think we only had two significant figures there, so it would actually be 19 meters per second as our answer. All right, very common to get a question like that because it seems like it doesn't give you very much information, but it really does. All right, so next week we'll kind of finish up with vertical circular motion, uh, and then we'll be moving on to gravitation, which means we're half done the unit already. Okay, so this unit goes by pretty quick. We'll also be giving out your permission forms for West Edmonton Mall uh, next week because we got to get those signed and back and everything before we can go. May 29th.